The gospel. No, mystery read the book. The gospel. What does that mean, the gospel? Good news. I got some good news. Go to work. Are you going to work, girl? Yes, sir. We love you. Thank you so much. I got you. Remember, I'll talk to you about those things. We are blessed to have you back, girl. Love you. Love you. Um, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan of regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good. <laughs> I keep telling you, God has a good time. God is having a blast for his own good pleasure. Yeah, what's up with this day? It's Jesus has a sense of humor, man. Jesus is hanging out with his guys in the shade. And here comes this young rich guy. He goes, watch, don't mess with watch. Just watch, sit up, just watch. And here he comes and walking over to Jesus and says, he goes, uh, Lord, uh, what do I have to do to follow you? He goes, oh, uh, all you have to do is just sell everything you own and give it to the poor and then come follow me. <laughs> he goes, oh, I can't do that. I have a lot of stuff. Well, there you go. Now put his head down one way. Is that true, what Jesus says? He was just messing with him. Because he knew that man's heart. He didn't want to follow Jesus. He wanted all the things that went with it. The prestige, the, all the people, all the love, all that. He wanted, he didn't want to follow Christ. He wanted Christ to follow him. So Christ is coming to this jack with this dude. Let's just mess with him, man. And God walked away with his death. Does God know your heart? Yeah. So I beg you to know your own heart. Remember what's important to you. And if it doesn't line up with God, shift it, change it. Find it so that it lines up with God's will. Then you'll have peace. The peace that Jesus says, the peace I bring you, the everlasting peace. Oh, gosh. He, God has now revealed to us this, this mysterious plan regarding uh, Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And this is the plan, you guys. You gotta check it out. He, he just, he got, got to watch. He just watch. He just says, hold on. He says, at the right time, he will bring everything. Say it again. Everything. He'll bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in Christ. and on earth. God has said, man, when it's time, when the last one has said, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, bam, it's done. The gates are closed and set up, we're all ready to go. It's a done deal. And then we go, vomitos. That's how it happens, man. There's a certain amount of people, there's certain people that God has cut out of the crowd for the before time. He knew you and said, you can be with me. You're going to be with me. He says, Sober Project, you're going to be with me. Amen. And we're going to walk around heaven like we are somebody. Amen. Amen. Little, little cocky, little swag. Sober Project. Ooh. That's right. That's who we are. Because God has shown us his power. He's shown us his authority. Oh, my God, he's shown us his grace and forgiveness, man. It's no joke, man. Those that are forgiven much are grateful much, man. We are a church that knows what it means to be grateful. Because we know we're sinners. We know that we're saved by grace. And praise God, he reminds us every single day. Amen. Amen. We can be a little cocky, but we know where that ends and he starts. We can be a little, uh, be a little bit funny. Everybody funny. You're funny too. But uh, God says, you know, that's going to be... You know, we don't cross these lines. I mean, when it's all said and done, we humble ourselves before the Lord. I mean, the psalm said earlier, it says, I'm on my knees. When I'm on my knees, I'm closer to heaven. We, we you guys are terrible. We have a lot of fun at our meetings, man. That, like, that's part of who we are, man. There's three rules, and one of those rules is have a good time. And, and we, 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 we do, it's pretty crazy sometimes, but when it's serious, it's no joke, man. When it's time to get real, it's no joke. Because we know people's lives are on the line. And we know also 
that people's eternal lives are on the line. So we joke, we have fun, but when it gets time to get serious, psh, ain't no problem about getting serious. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 11 says, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received and inheritance from God. See, you guys, man, you thought I was just joking when I said you're going to get the inheritance, man. You thought I was just, you know, saying stuff, man. No, I read it. I don't know when, but it must have read it sometime. That's what we say, huh, church? That you will receive his inheritance. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the gates of heaven and receive your inheritance. <laughs> It says right here, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. How are we united with Christ? We are now his brothers and sisters. We are united as children of God. He is the son of God. We are sons and daughters of a living, breathing God. Amen. So we get now, we are adopted into the family, brought into the family, and we have complete, complete authority. Just like Jesus. Right now, you, the believer, the Christian, has complete authority over Satan, over evil, over, over, over hell, over death. We have the same authority as Christ had. We just got to have enough faith to walk it. He says right here, he says, furthermore, because you are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he shows us in advance. And he makes everything work out according to his plan. His plan. Not ours. Amen? Amen. Not ours. How many times do you want to, hey God, come join me. I got an idea. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You say, no. <laughs> no. He says, come join me. God says, come join me. There's a book that's called, uh, the guy who wrote his name is Blackaby or uh, something. Oh, I can't think of it. I got old. But the, but the whole book is about experiencing God. experiencing God. Thank you, sweetheart. It's called Experiencing God. It's a workbook. And you go through this workbook. And, and, the, and the whole idea is that if you see God at work, join him. You don't need to start your own. Start all, you, 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 don't, you don't need to reinvent the will. They got the will. Go join them. That's why I got an amen in the point. My cha -ching. <laughs> He says, you want to start a Bible study? Well, start a Bible study. We got Bible studies all over the place. Go and start a Bible study. We show you how to start a Bible study. Hey, Mark, oh my God. I have the church. We had been starting. We just had the meetings. And he, I, I, and I, he I was outside. And he shook those keys at me. And he goes, me and you are going to be tight, brother. I go, amen, brother. Amen. He goes, no, no, you don't understand. I got keys to another church. Let's have another meeting. Huh. I never thought of that. I just wanted to have one meeting so I could come to church. So let's have two meetings. Let's have three meetings. Let's have ten meetings. Let's go to Montana, Mark. What an idea. They have moose. No, we didn't see no moose, but I saw deer stopping at a red light. <laughs> then the light changed and it kept going. There's no joke. The hell in Montana. The, the deer's like, red light, green light. That's hilarious. Right now, man, the Sober Project is ripping through Montana. All the way from Helena to uh, Bozeman, Butte. It's in their Department of Corrections. Amen. They took it upon themselves. They don't have halfway houses like we do, but they got these three, three months, you know, that's <coughs> temporary housing. It's in the housing church, Sober Project, Rock and Montana. <laughs> oh, so then there's this lady that lives in Iowa, and she used to live in Montana. Those who visit her friends in Montana, and she, God had been putting on her heart to start something there. And they said, where did you get this? Oh, that long-haired preacher from the desert showed up. Yeah. <laughs> that was Mark. So a couple years go by, Bobby and I go to Iowa. And then in 
Sioux City, Iowa. They got, I think, three meetings now going on. And, and it's also with the Department of Corrections in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Iowa and Nebraska is South Dakota, right in that area. God opens doors. I wanted one little meeting so I could start a church with 100 ex-junkies. I figured that could be a cool church. The guy says, no, I want thousands to come to your church. You can't see them all, but they can come in, they can get some because they want some, and then they're going to go off and share it with others. And they're going to take off and take the sober project to other churches. They're going to take off and they're going to show sober swag in churches all over this community. Amen. I don't think there's too many churches you can go into somebody and say, yeah, I got baptized at Duncan 9, 19, Duncan 9, 29, Duncan 9, something like that. Six? Duncan 9, 6. Amen, brother. Uh -huh. No joke. Speaking of Duncan 9, we need one. Who in this church has not been baptized? Needs to be baptized. I know Mike will not baptize you, son. You guys want to get baptized? Come on, I'm going to hold him down to the bubble stop. Uh, we need to set up a, we're going to set that up real soon. We're going to get a bubble. We want to make sure that we get that taken care of. Um, let's, let's, let's get through this family stuff so we can go eat, all right? But this is real important. Listen to this. It says, verse 12, God's purpose was that we Jews, this is, this is, this is um, Paul talking, and, and Paul the Apostle Paul, uh, he's writing this letter to this, this church in Ephesus, and it's, it's a, probably a letter that's going to go to a bunch of different churches. That's how they would write it and pass it along. He's encouraging that book of oh, Ephesians is incredible. So it says, um, God's purpose was that we Jews who were the would bring Praise and glory to God. See, God exists to be glorified. That's why God exists. That's all. God exists to be glorified. He, he demands to be worshipped. He's entitled to be worshipped. He is to be glorified. Verse 13 says, and now you Gentiles, you Gentiles, you. <laughs> Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. He said, God put on his heart to first talk to the Jews, but then to go out and get us, round us up together so that we can know Christ. The Gentile. The Gentile is anybody other than a Jew. Got that? And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believe in Christ, He identified you as His own. Check it out. By giving you the Holy Spirit, whom He promised long ago. Check this out. The Spirit is God's guarantee. God is guaranteed. He guarantees. Does anybody here, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Do you know if you are or not? Because if you're not, man, let's talk. Because I know I walk with the Spirit of God in me. There's one place that's big enough to hold God. The universe can't hold him. Time can't hold him. This church can't hold him. But there's a place in my heart where God lives. Amen. And He is the Holy Spirit that resides in me. I know. I know I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're not sure, let's talk. Because I want to make sure that you know what we're talking about, to be baptized by the Spirit of God. Verse 14 says, The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us the He promised and that He has purchased us. Say it again. Purchased he has purchased us to be His only people. God wants you, you ex-junkies, you ex-pimps, you ex-prostitutes, you ex-tax collectors. We actually had a tax collector in the church. Remember that guy in the Church of the Desert who worked for the IRS? He got saved. <laughs> and it finishes up with this, church. He says, he did this so we, we would praise him for our that's all he wants. That's all he wants. Give God the glory. God does all of that so that we can say he's our God. He does everything he does for us so that we can say he 
He is our God. Amen. 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 If you're here, man, and you're not sure, no. if you've not given your life to Christ, if you're not sure that you have the Holy Spirit, this is where I'm going to ask you to come up and pray with me and make sure that you're right with God so that we don't miss this opportunity, we don't miss this time that you would come and ask Christ to be your Lord and Savior, to be your God. This is where we say it to me, do you want some? Come get some. Yeah. 